Hey everyone, so in this screencast we're going to take a look at um, Segwin, uh, I'm not sure what's the correct pronunciation, it could be Sigwin, it could be Segwin, I'm just going to refer to it as Segwin. Um, okay, so the website for Segwin is segwin.com. Um, so what what is Segwin? It's a, as you can see, the website mentions it's a collection of tools which provide a Linux look and feel environment for Windows. So, which basically means that if you're mostly used to working on Linux, Segwin aims to give you at least a subset, a good subset of the uh, a number of Linux tools and utilities that you're usually be used to. Uh, Segwin is also a DLL, which acts as a Linux API layer, providing substantial Linux API functionality. Uh, if you look around, you will find that this is really the core that Segwin gives. That this is really the core of Segwin. Uh, that is, it, it's the API, it, it tries to emulate the, well, the Linux API, the POSIX API layer, on top of which, um, so it, so you can get a program which is written for Linux or with POSIX compatibility in mind and compile it on Sibin without much effort as the website says. Uh, and that is made possible by this DLL. So this is like the interface between your Windows and your um, Linux sources. Uh, what is Sigwin not? It's not a way to run native Linux apps on Windows. You must rebuild your application from source. So, which so, so uh, so like I mentioned just a while ago, it's uh, the DLL that gives does all that magic. So when you compile that, you, you when you rebuild your application from source, it obviously finds this DLL and uh, so it gets that API that it's looking for, and and then obviously compilation would go smoothly as long as it gets everything that it needs in sedgewind.dll. Uh, it is also not a way to magically make native web Windows apps aware of Unix functionality like signals and PTYs. Okay, so obviously we have got an idea that sedgewind gives us, um, it, it, it is capable of uh, doing a lot. But um, the main function that we are going to take a look at in this screencast is um, setting up a C development environment using GCC, which is the GNU C compiler. The website for that is uh, GNU, sorry, GCC.GNU.org. So this is the home page of the GNU C compiler collection. The Current release, as you can see, is uh, 4.7.2. So what you're going to do is you're going to use Sigwin to get a working GCC environment on Windows. Uh, I will go to the download page to download the installer. So go to the install. Go to download sun setup.exe. Mm, as you can see, it's downloading. It's a very small file because it sets up a base for Sigwin to install and uh, yeah one thing to note here is that you would need an active internet connection for Sigwin to download all the packages that it needs to install right so this is where you choose the download source which is installed from the internet download without installing install from local directory uh, instead from local directory would be helpful for you if you have already a package sheet, packages downloaded and uh, you would like just like to install it from there. But since we don't have anything else, we haven't I haven't installed Sigwin before, so I'm just going to select the first option instead from the internet. Uh, download without installing is uh, it will download the packages for you, but it won't install them, which is again not something we want. So we just want to install install download and install. So I'm just going to go ahead with the first option. Uh, the root directory, this is where you um, select where the Sigwin will be installed. Um, the website recommends that you shouldn't install directly on the C drive uh, for reasons which you can f uh, find out in the frequently asked questions section. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead with the default, I'm going to click next. Uh, where I So this is where I can choose where I want to download my packages. I'm going to just change to work, which is so that directory already exists for me. Um, Sigwin packages okay uh, so it doesn't exist so yeah as I, I'd like to create so here you can set configure your internet connection so if you're using a proxy or you know whatever um, using a direct connection so I'm just going to, I'm, since I use a direct I'm just going to end with that 
Okay, so it so okay, so this is a list of mirror sites given to you. So this is like where you can choose. Uh, so this is really a list of uh, places where you would be able to download the packages from. So try to choose something which is closer to you if you can find out from here. Um, I'm currently in Australia, so I'm just going to choose mirror.aarnet.edu.au. I could just choose the HTTP or FTP, so I'm going to choose ja choose the HTTP one. So it's it, it proceeds to select. Uh, okay, so here it gives me the packages that I want to install. Um, so like I told you in the beginning, we're going to my interest here is to show you how you can set up a GCC on Windows. So I'm just going to go to the Devel section, which would be Develop. I'm going to search for GCC. Uh, okay so yes this is the core is something so this is as you can see this is 3.4 i would um uh is there anything else oh i'm sorry so i'm not going to so this is 3.4 so i'm going to skip it we have the gcc4 as this is the 4 given so this is the 4.5.3 so so this is the 4.5 so this is the 4 package this is the 4 core package Going to install the GNU debugger, which will be helpful to you when you do uh, debugging in C. And as you can see, if you if you are familiar with uh, tools like Git and a number of other tools, you'll see them all here. So I think that should be enough for this for our purpose here. Uh, let's say I would also want to install the editor like uh, Emacs or Vim. So I'm just going to try and find that. Um okay, let's see. Okay, that should probably be in the editor section. So you can see Emacs, so I am an Emacs user, so I'm going to just install Emacs, it's Emacs twenty three four. You can if you want you can install GVim or just maybe the console or the terminal version which is Vim, uh the Vim common. I alright. Okay, and uh, there's one another package that we'll need to install which I just found um during doing the screencast is that um, so GCC obviously depends on a number of libraries and some of them are math libraries as well so in the math section uh, there is a library called libmpfr fr which is the it's a multi precision floating point arithmetic library so for some reason I f saw that it does not select the mpr4 uh, package uh, it does select the one, but GCC four seems to be needing the lib MPR four. So I'm just going to. Uh, so you no, you wouldn't see the reinstall option. You would see the install option. But since I installed it before, I'm just going to reinstall just to show you how it works. So lib MPR four, lib MPFR four is the one that I'm selecting. To click next, and uh, once again, this uh, so it asks me to click on either create an icon or desktop or an icon set window I'm just going to go ahead and select both um, click finish and okay let's start uh, so as you can see it has uh, created a new menu item for me called sigwin terminal or you could just start from here sigwin terminal it's going to create a program emacs uh, prog one dot c hash include stdio.h int main int parag e uh, printf hello world return zero and we save it we are going to now it. it has compiled successfully and we have the hello world output that's cool okay so we have now successfully installed GCC so as you can see it's GCC 4.5.3 version um, of course um, just to give you some I mean, just to play around a bit I'm just going to compile this using the minus G symbol which is for debugging so I'm going to start GDB. Uh, of course, we don't really don't have anything to debug here, so I'm just going to run. It gives me the output, hello world. 
there's going to print a backtrace there's no backtrace of course because there's no breakpoint so well gdb uh well i'm actually looking forward to explore sigwin quite a bit because it really looks interesting to explore um i'll try to share if i have uh, something interesting in a next screencast or maybe in a blog post so i hope you enjoyed the screencast and uh, will be able to try out sigwin for compiling um, c programs using gcc on windows till next time goodbye